Well, you never know who shows up when you're out here working on an old truck. <laughs> Looks like the fun girl showed up. <laughs> Chevrolet 3100 and this will be part three of the 3,000 mile preventative maintenance series I've been doing on it and hopefully the final of this series unless of course we run into some unexpected uh, situation we should be able to button it up today so anyway we're gonna get back underneath it and we're gonna adjust them rear brakes and the parking brakes and we're gonna check the front brakes out too and adjust them if necessary. So stay tuned and let's get busy. All right, before I crawl under there, I'm gonna get all my ducks lined up just in case I get under there and fall asleep. But I made this cheat sheet here, and hopefully you can make it out on how to adjust the huck brakes. Now, you know, to recap, I've done several videos, and I believe there's uh, several other videos on the, uh, on the web, on YouTube. But these are not, these huck brakes are not self-adjusting. They're, they're not like the Bendix brakes that replace these hucks. These hucks are, uh, they have to be adjusted, uh, well, it checked and adjusted at least every 3,000 miles. That's what I'm discovering on my trucks, on my truck here, because they, uh, they can get... How I know they start getting out of adjustment is when I start to have to pump the brake to get a real good pedal. To get the pedal that I normally get on properly adjusted brakes, if I got to pump them once or twice to get them to that point, then I know I need to adjust them. And that works out to be about when I do the 3,000 mile. But anyway, on the hook brakes, the, uh, the, there's two adjusters per wheel. Uh, uh, each shoe, the, the leading shoe and the trailing shoe, has their own adjuster, okay? And they spin opposite to either expand them out to, uh, to adjust your brakes out, or they spin, uh, you know, or they adjust in to give you more clearance. Generally, you're going to adjust them out, okay, unless you're taking the uh, uh, drum off. But anyway... So we're going to concentrate on the rears, and I got them down here, okay? Now, this is the left side, which is your driver's side, and this is the right side, which is the passenger side, rear brakes. So on the leading shoe, in order to expand that shoe out, I need to turn the adjuster up on the, uh, to adjust the rear trailing shoe I've got to turn the adjuster down okay that's the left side of course you go to the right side it's just the opposite so anyway uh, now that I'm armed with this knowledge let's crawl underneath here and hope I don't fall asleep all right I hope that's getting it good that camera's got a better angle than I got <laughs> Okay, we're gonna get these dust caps off okay now there's gonna be some resistance when you spin these wheels so anyway okay moaning and groaning
I've got the correct tool, but you know, I found that the screwdriver works better. All right. Now it says, the book says, to turn it till it can't turn, then to back it off to where you can spin it. So that's what I'm going to do, because it's hard, it's hard to gauge drag when you're, uh, and you're turning the gear, you know, the gear and the torque tube and all that other good stuff. I'd say that's making good contact. Now I'm going to back him off a little. Just down. This is where I may need that uh, actual real adjustment tool. Actually, where I want it. I want it to make contact and as it drives it'll wear. You notice it's, it's not making that groaning sound anymore. Alright. That's where I want him. So I'm going to get out on the other side. Alright. Good deal. Like I say, it'll wear some to, to free up. Uh, the manual says adjust till they you can't turn it, and then turn it back till it can turn. So anyway, I hope that's picking it up. Okay. Okay, we're gonna move over to the other side. I hope this is gonna get it. All right. If not, well, I'll just edit it out. Okay. All right. Now this is just the opposite. Ooh, look at him, how free he's spinning. <laughs> oh my! Oh my! So this goes down. The leading edge goes down to tighten them up. And the uh, the rears go up. So you can you can hear the. You can hear the shoes making contact. Right. Oh, these are way. I haven't adjusted these rears in 6,000 miles. I guess it's been. Mm 
Okay, let's loosen them up just a hair. Just to where it starts making that groaning noise. All right. Now let's do the rear trailing shoe. He adjusts up the tightening him. Okay. Well, he didn't take much at all. That leading shoe is what. Yeah, that leading shoe is where I was weighing up. Adjustment. There you go. I'll take that. They're making uh, they're making contact and spinning, and like I can say they'll uh, it'll wear. Uh, them shoes after about, oh, I don't know, a few miles, it'll wear the shoes to where they'll just have that minutia of clearance and, uh, and we're good to go. All right. We'll check our parking brake here in a moment. Uh, also, I guess while I'm under here, I better check that rear grease. All right. Let's see. Oh, I got that showing it. See if anything rips it out. Oop. It says as long as it's within, oh, I can't remember what it says exact. It's right there at the edge. Okay, I don't need to add. Okay. It says if it's right there at the edge or within, a, I, th I want to think a quarter inch. Maybe even a half inch, but maybe a quarter inch. Okay. Well, he's good. All right. Now, he is dripping some, and uh, he's one of my drippers that uh, I've had to deal with. And it's not where it looks like it's still coming from the pan side that I put the uh, uh, Permatex gray on. So, I guess. Uh, I didn't have a gasket. The gasket I ordered was uh, ended up being for, I don't know what it was for. It was for a, a rear end uh, derby cap that was a whole lot bigger than this one. So uh, I may just try to order another one again. So I didn't have a gasket. I just used uh, Permatex Gray to uh, to make a uh, Perma, uh, an RTV gasket. And uh, well, it looks like it's still weeping some. It's one of my, my drippers. That uh, it's not, as you can see, it's uh, now this is 6,000 miles uh, since I've serviced this, and uh, uh, I pulled the derby cover off and did all you know, and cleaned it up and everything, inspected it, 
and uh, checked it 3,000 miles ago. So I haven't put any uh, fluid in this thing in uh, 6,000 miles, and it's good to go, even though it does drip some. It's enough to put a spot on the floor. So anyway, let me see. So let me kind of take a little look around underneath here, see if I see anything jumping out at me. But, uh, man, oh, man, I just, uh, I'm getting comfortable. Sheesh. But I'll tell you this. One day when I grow up, I'm getting a lift. And I ain't whistling Dixie. All right, while I'm under here, one thing I wanted to show you is uh, this, the Chevy is pretty close to stock. Uh, it was a farm truck, and... Uh, I knew the original owner, and he kept it. Uh, he kept it in good condition, other other than you know working it pretty hard. But this has the underbed spare tire carrier, and some of you all may not have that, and may want to go to that if you're wanting to stay, uh, you know, close to stock. Well, this is kind of what one of them looks like in '49. I'll show you the backside, how it hooks, uh, you know, bolts up there. But it pivots right here. When you loosen the bolt up there at the front, the whole assembly will pivot down, and then you can unbolt. There's like two lugs, lug bolts that holds the spare tire, and that is actually an original. I mean, I don't know how how old that is. The uh, uh, bias belt. Uh, <laughs> 600 uh what is that what is that size 650 uh tire on this thing on the stock rim i mean that's uh it's it's uh it's for emergency use only see it's got some cracks there in the sidewall but look at the thread on that thing that's 650 i think is what it was but anyway so that's what it looks like i'll show you an outside sh shot of it back there in the back all right, and here you can see how it hooks into the frame. Then I've got all kinds of spacers there. I want to thank that that bolt is not the original stock bolt. I think uh, old Glee or Gene, his son, who is probably his main mechanic, probably put that in there because the original's gone. I would replace it, but I think that adds a little to it. It holds it up and it works. So anyway, but that's what it looks like. From the rear all right now we're going to adjust the parking brake here at the intermediate shaft to the cable that comes out of the parking brake assembly now i replaced this cable i don't know how many miles ago and uh so it's been that's a new cable and uh it does work but uh what i got to do is i got to break these two this lock nut loose and then back both these nuts off and then what you do with the uh you take this cotter pin out and this and this pin take it out and then you pull this cable that goes back to the brake as far as you can till it hit what the book calls a positive stop and at that point the hole in this uh fork needs to line up with the hole in this uh lever here if it doesn't, you either need to turn it out or in in order to line them up. And that's how you pry, uh, properly adjust them. So I'm going to see if I can't find a, 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 bra a stand for this uh, uh, camera. And I'll see if I can't get it here and show you how I do it. Alright, here we go.
it could be adjusted out quite a bit more. Okay. You turn the uh, the clevis in. Okay, that's why you un you unlock these bolts here. You turn the clevis in in order to shorten it. All right, let's see. Still doing some more. Quite a bit. that book that's about it there you go turned it in quite a few turns all right well the wheel's spinning good all right Let's, uh, let's do a test and see how it works. Right, brakes on, wheel shouldn't spin. Let's see. Spinning no problem. Put the brake on. There you go. Locked up. That's that's exactly what I want. I checked the other side already too and it did good. There. That's what we want. Let me show you something. Now the manual says, back these off and pull this out till you get a positive stop. And then you align it with the hole in this brace or this lever. And I turn this in quite a bit. Don't be afraid to do it till you hit that positive stop. Because until I pulled it as hard as I could by hand, no tools, but by hand, that book says by hand, and line that up. I cannot move that tire down with the parking brake set and there's no drag whatsoever with it off. So there you go. Both sides are done. I'm glad to have that. I get to where it was slipping on me and uh, you know if I park like at the dump or something where I want to keep idling, well you know I was afraid it'd roll off. So there we go. Peace of mind. On the show got the cotter key back in. Got the other side done too and while I'm under here I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at that rear shackle, body shackle there. And he's looking a little bit on the rough side. So uh, I can see them having to get changed here one day in the future. Anyway, also looking up over here at my ball housing. I don't have any drip, no drips. And so far it's not leaked, of course, you know. It's just sitting there static. It's not until you get it down on the road and going that you do. The bad thing is, I guess I'm going to have to address rebuilding that transmission or at least put new bushings in. It's, it's weeping out of all where there's a bushing. It's weeping. I mean, 70 years old, what do you expect? <laughs> so anyway, just I'll put that on my to-do list. So until then, I'll still have them little drip spots. So I'll be putting cardboard under it. All right. All right, I need to, uh, I checked the, uh, I'm spinning the wheel. You can see the fronts need adjustment also. So let's take that off. 
is this now the the left fronts are just like the uh, left rear you turn it up the front adjust the leading shoe adjust you turn it up to tight uh, to spread it okay this shouldn't take too much I wouldn't think there we go all right I turn him down a hair all right there we go uh, we'll turn him down to tighten him spread him out There, that's exactly what I want right there. I don't need any more. All right. Again, the book says tighten it till you can't spin it by hand, and then back it off till you can spin it. All right. I like them a little bit tighter, so uh, and I don't seem to be running through uh, shoes any more than normal, so. That's about what I want, a full spin, maybe a spin and a half, and let the uh, friction will stop it. It's like I say, after uh, so many miles, it'll wear the shoe to where you'll have that minute clearance. All right. We'll get the other side. We're going to do some greasing while we're under here, too. Me, grease is just a greasy job. <laughs> I never did get that cornhead grease for here. See how much he's leaking out the gearbox. I put 80 90 in the gearbox and it's not holding it at all. I need something like cornhead grease, something thicker. All right, just tie it in. the other side. All right, let's get her down. off of it took them for a little quick little uh little around the block oh about a little oh half mile run and uh you know by adjusted the uh timing to 12 degrees before top dead center 
And then I discovered that my two secondaries weren't opening on my dual carburetors. So I took it out there and did a little bit of running uh, to see if I could tell any difference. Well, my low speed and pulling out of a, you know, pulling out from a dead stop, pulling through turns, low speed acceleration, right on. That timing's good. No valve clank. Uh, one thing to point out about these secondaries, they don't even begin to open up until the primaries are almost wide open. So they're really only come into play when you're up, you know, you wanting, you know, wide open throttle max RPM, which I did goose it a couple times, and it seemed like it be it might be a little peppier, but I won't know till I take it out. So we'll take it out here in a little bit, and we'll figure out if uh, what it does on a highway, maybe even an interstate. But uh, so far, big thumbs up on that service. This thing's ready to run. And you can see it's in the cruise install. That means the GMC's in the work install. Let me tell you, I really enjoy running this V8. I mean, this thing is a blast to drive. Unfortunately, it's uh, its freedom was short-lived. It's got to get back here and it needs some more tension done. A new problem cropped up with me out here running around. And, uh, well, I'll just save that uh, revelation for the next uh, vlog dealing with this. Since we're dealing with the Chevrolet, we'll just say that he's parked, the GMC, the Jimmy is now parked here in the service lot, and it needs some work done before it can get back out on the road again. So anyway, we'll leave it at that. Well, you never know who shows up when you're out here working on an old truck. Looks like the fun girl showed up. Hello, doll. <laughs> yep, them fun girls sure get around. Of course, Bernie. <laughs>